Mario Carini is a historian and former president of the Italian Community Center in the historic Third Ward of Milwaukee. He is a grandson of Italian immigrants and has devoted his life to preserving the traditions of Italian immigrants in the Milwaukee area. The immigrant experience here in Milwaukee actually begun in about eight, in the 1880s. But the majority of those that came, uh, came after 1900. I would say between 1900 when we had uh, 756 Italians in Milwaukee and then by 1910, uh, there were um, 4,685 Italians in Milwaukee, so that jumped. Now, being here in this area was a very good area for working. It was so, uh, you could walk out of your, your house um, if you lived right out here, and not even a block or two blocks away you had work that way. Right here, where we are right now, were the railroad yards. So they got work here. Um, just less than a mile from here were the foundries of Milwaukee. The city garbage plant was over here, so many of them worked for the sanitation department. My grandfather, I know that by 1908, he worked for uh, the city. Uh, he, made, uh, he worked 10 hours a day, six days a week, a dollar a day. They settled right in this area uh, simply because the, well, the housing was cheap, but the important thing is that there was already a couple of families here in Milwaukee, and it was called chain migration, <clears throat> where one would come and then he called for the others to come, and this is how it went. And the one thing that made uh, very, very um, good propaganda for them was photographs that they would send back to Italy. The kids that came over, like my mother was born in Italy and came over, uh, they, they were different because they were born there but schooled in America. So they were, I mean, in, in, in respect, American outside of the home because in the house they had to follow the mores and customs of Italy. And when it came time, for example, for marriages, well, they were all fixed. The Italians in Milwaukee actually started three colonies. That's what they call them. Um, one, the biggest one was the Third Ward right here, like I say, because there were by 1910, most of them were down here. However, there was always a shortage of housing here. These were interim. This was a way station where they came, they were close with their families, uh, with other relatives, other friends from their towns. And that gave them a support, a sense of security, a sense of belonging. Once they began, uh, to have a little bit more money, uh, they wanted to go out. They wanted to get out of uh, the Third Ward. They wanted to be with other Americans, too. That was the thing. Now, there's a lot of Italians still living in the um, uh, First Ward, and they started to go up there already around uh, World War I. I would say about 1915, 1916, that's when I have them started to be listed in that area. But there was also Italians, excuse me, that moved out to West Dallas. And who brought them out there was uh, a missionary, a Protestant missionary. And he wanted to make like a utopia for them out in West Dallas. And he called it Villaggio Marconi. The, the uh, ICC, uh, the Italian Community Center, I should say, was an offshoot. Some of the men that lived down here and um, were part of, you know, the festivals that we had said, why don't we get together, see if we can have a festival. And they did. And that was down here in 1979 uh, on the Summerfest grounds. 
Stavaggine e angeli Si sempre pegherà Pegherà Well, that became so um, popular, and within a couple of years, we had enough money to buy uh, a building, which they did. The one thing I, I'd like to say about it all is that there's a unity there now that wasn't there before. And um, many, many of our, our members that uh, had lost each other for years, finally, suddenly got together again. So this is the beauty of it, that sense of camaraderie, that sense of, um, even if it is ethnic identity, you know, where uh, you can get together and be yourself. I mean, remember, they were strangers in a strange land. That was the whole thing. Vincenzo Alberico is a native Italian from Naples, Italy. He left Italy when he was 20 years old and chose to attend Marquette University to pursue a career in the United States Navy as a member of Marquette's ROTC program. Mi chiamo Vincenzo e sono di Napoli. Um, my dad's in the Italian Air Force and my mom's American and uh, she's retired Air Force, American Air Force. And I have my two sisters that are in high school right now. So, Because um, I tried to go into the Italian Air Force when I got out of high school but it's a little more competitive there because money, uh, funding issues, and uh, other things. And I wasn't able to get in, and so then I had to try another country. I mean, so. even when I was in Italy, it, I was still like half American, or you know. So it's not like I was completely Italian, and I'm coming here, and I'm just now becoming American or starting this. This, you know. So I. So I've, I've always been American, always felt American, so it's like, I guess it's just a switch. Now I'm, uh, I have the American side on, so it, it just feels normal to me. When I got here, my family kind of escorted me, made sure that I started college, and then, then they left. So they made, they kind of like walked me through campus, made sure I got into my dorm, and then they left. Uh, in the beginning, it was kind of, it was cool. I, actually, it was sad leaving my friends over there, but then coming here and knowing I was going to start a new life, because there's not really a lot of future for the young generations in Italy right now because uh, like the whole um, economic crisis in Europe and um, so that's bad so I had to leave I have friends that are back in Italy and at my age and they don't have a job and they're not going to school so I'm doing something that they're not doing so it sucks to be them so I'm here right now and it was tough the first period because you know I miss my family and I miss all my Italian traditions um, but I, got over it, I guess, and uh, now I'm happy. Not to be in Milwaukee, but to be going to school. So. Oh, it's a lot different. It's like a lot better in America. Uh, it's more expensive, obviously, uh, but uh, you, you have so many more opportunities. I think that the schools in Europe are more theoretical here. You actually are more hands-on and get to do a lot more stuff and I think the government gives more money or whoever gives more money to the schools to do so much more in Europe we don't have that privilege you know my English and my English writing and reading aren't as good as my speaking so yeah I had to take like an ESL special learners test as soon as I got here and I did pretty bad and so I, I had to take English for special learners uh, my first uh, or sorry ESL my first semester, or second semester. So, and I was like the only person that could speak English in the class. How it's very fast paced over here. Everybody's like always doing something. You know, every, over there people relax a little more. You know, here everything's open 24 hours. Over there people like take a break, relax, and enjoy life. Here like, everything's crazy. So that's kind of the mentality is different. For example, you're like the Italian community center or like your Italian restaurants here in America, they, they like dim the lights so they turn everything like pretty much dark, you know? And they think that that's how they eat in Italy, but it's not. You know, people want to see their food in Italy. It's not because you just almost turn off the light that that's Italian because that's, that's what they do. They just put a couple of pictures with old people in it, and then they put like a couple of Italian flags and then they almost turn off the lights, put some like 
bread sauce and say this is an Italian restaurant. That's that's what they do. So, it's not like that. That's your stereotype. That's that's not what we do. I don't like Italian restaurants in America. I would not go. I was my relatives usually bring me there because they think that it makes me feel like I'm going back home, but it does not. It actually makes me mad and sad because I'm like, I want to go home and I want to eat real food, not this this stuff that's like very fake and. Ciao Giordana, un bacio.